if I don't time travel and defeat the villain, all the kids in my school are going to get turned into pizza. And Grinch's mom was like, you should have thought of that when you were watching TV, young man. All right. So I need three amazing obstacles. If you have a great obstacle, raise your hand. All right. How about you? You're going to be obstacle number one. Let's get uh, How about uh, the girl in the pink right there? And how about you in the red right there, the red long sleeve? Do all three of you have amazing obstacles in mind? Yes. Okay. This is the story about nine year old Chris. I did feed an evil villain. To time and tribe travel to defeat an evil villain to keep all the kids from his school from being turned into pieces. One day, Chris is walking along. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna time travel and defeat an evil villain because I'm really cool that way. <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> All right, so Chris is feeling pretty good. He's walking along. He gets into his time travel machine. <laughs> All right. He time travel. He stepped out. Oh no! Instead of traveling to the evil villain, he was in the middle of World War II. Oh, oh no! Chris is running around. There's all these soldiers running around. There's hand grenades going off. There's guns fighting. All these soldiers are running around. Chris is like, oh no! He tries to get back to his time travel machine, but there's too many hand grenades and bullets flying all around. The soldiers are getting closer and closer. Quickly, Chris reaches into his backpack. Chris reaches into his backpack. Chris reaches into his backpack. Like this. And I thought. He's like, let's see. Uh, one direction, no. Lady Gaga, no. Imagine dragons, appropriate, but no. Wait. Ballings. No. La 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 Suddenly, suddenly, all the soldiers stop. They put down their guns and hand grenades and listen. La la la. Suddenly, all of the soldiers begin to ballet dance. <laughs> Chris is the buttons again to go to the right place. Okay, come on over here. That's a great obstacle. Let's have a big round of applause for World War II. Okay, so we've made it past the first obstacle, but there's two more in our way before we can time travel to the evil gun. So Chris gets back in his car and he's pushing buttons. Suddenly. Okay. He gets out of his time machine. He looks around. Something is coming towards him. It's an air breathing giant shark. Oh no. It's coming right towards Chris. Chris is like, ah! So Chris is very polite. He says very politely to the shark, um, will you let me by? And the evil shark says, no. And Chris is like, that is such a rude shark. So Chris is like, wait, 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 don't eat me. I got something better. So he reaches into his backpack. He pulls out his lunch. There you go. He's like, um, do sharks like bologna sandwiches? Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. All right. He eats it. Uh, it's not good enough. All right. Well, how about flaming hot cheetos? No, not flaming hot cheetos. All right. Well, we, oh, there in the bottom of Chris's lunch bag. Is an ooey, gooey, chocolate cupcake. The shark's like, chocolate. Ah. So Chris flings the chocolate cupcake in the air, and the giant shark's all, chocolate. Ah. There's frosting and crumbs flying everywhere. And while the shark is eating the cupcake, Chris tiptoes quietly past it. All right, let's have a big round of applause for our air breathing shark. Okay, we have made it past the first two obstacles, but there's one more in our way. What is the last obstacle? Big bubble. Big bubble.
Oh no. Okay. This is really bad. Here, come on over here. We'll, we'll get you so you're not blown. Here. Actually, why don't we head over here? We'll go because we're almost to our goal. We've made it to the third obstacle. We'll get you guys out of the. There you go. Okay. So Chris is doing pretty good. He's made it there. He punches in. He time travels. He finds himself in the dark jungles of Brazil. Okay. He's feeling pretty good. He steps out of his time machine, though, and he slips on a giant banana peel. <laughs> he falls and sprains his wrist. He's like, oh, that really hurt. Suddenly. Giant gorilla. Oh, there's a humongous, hundred foot tall giant gorilla. The gorilla lifts Chris into the air, holds it over his head, and eats Chris. No. So Chris is around. He's like, where am I? Where am I? Am I? Am I? Am I? The giant gorilla says, "You're in my tummy." And Chris is like, "Gross." So Chris reaches into his backpack one last time, pulls out the ultimate weapon, a feather. Chris stands up. Chris stands up on his tiptoes and starts to tickle the inside of the gorilla's throat, and the gorilla starts to cough. <laughs> Consequences. Consequences are the results of actions. Have your parents ever said to you, if you don't finish your homework by bedtime, there will be consequences? Okay? But consequences don't have to be bad. If Chris travels through time, defeats the evil villain, and saves the school, he gets a parent. He gets to be on TV. He gets a special nine year old driver's license. And a small red Lamborghini convertible to go to. But if an evil villain defeats Chris, bah, you guys all get turned into pizza. Let's have a good round of applause for my helpers. Good job. Because they were such good helpers, I have signed this piece of coat posters for all my five helpers up here. Here we go. <laughs> okay, one more time. Big round of applause for all my helpers. Yeah. How many of you would like to read that story? Okay. Who made up that story? You did. I did not. That was your hero, your goal, your obstacles, and your consequences. So the next time your teachers ask you to make up a story, all you need is a hero, whoever or whatever you want it to be, a goal, which obviously you guys are amazing at, Obstacles, which you guys are amazing at, and consequences. What happens if they succeed and fail? They die. And you'll have a great idea. But what if somebody tells you your idea isn't good enough? Should you stop making up stories? Yeah. No. No. Every author that I have ever met has had someone tell that their stories weren't good enough. J.K. Rowling got the first Harry Potter book rejected 11 times. No. But she didn't give up. Now remember Trenton and Callista. Here's a boy and a girl who live in a world where creativity is against the law. But they learn something super important about creativity. What they learn is this. Through creativity, I'll change the world. Let's do that one more time. Through creativity, I'll change the world. Every single one of you can 
can change the world. And all it takes is one little idea and believing in that idea. Do we have time to do questions or are we getting close? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll yeah. do maybe like three questions. Okay. Yeah. Before we do the questions, hang on, because I think there's a couple things that you guys want to know. One is we have mysteries of code bookmarks for all of you. And not just here, um, I got enough bookmarks for all the third, fourth, and fifth graders. So everybody gets a mystery of code bookmark. Also, I think, can I borrow your poster for just a minute there? Thank you, my obstacle. All right, I think when I was handing out the autographed posters that I might have heard one or two of you go, I want an autographed poster. Is that true? Yeah! Here is the deal. My uh, assembly here today is being sponsored by Barnes & Noble, and tonight I'm going to be at the Noonan Barnes & Noble at 6 o'clock. Everybody, Park. yep, in Ashland Park, everybody who comes to the bookstore gets a free autographed poster that I will sign to you, okay? Now, if, if you want to if you want to buy books, they will have books for sale, they'll have book one, book two, the... I think they'll have some of my other books, but you don't have to buy anything. All you have to do is show up and go, dude, give me a poster, and I'll sign it for you. Now, if you, it'll probably go about an hour and a half, maybe to two hours, okay? Um, if you can't make it, you can have a friend get a poster for you, or if you want to get a poster or get a book reserved, have your parents call the Barnes & Noble store. The information for the store, they're on the invitations. It has the address and the time. If you call the store and say, hey, we can't come or we're going to be there later, will you reserve it for me? They will keep one and they'll have me sign them and they'll hold them for you. So, Okay. All right. So let's do three questions. Yes. Question number one. Mysteries of Cove is available pretty much anywhere that you can buy books. Um, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Amazon um, oh, most bookstores should have. Uh, yes. Quiet, quiet. I hope they will make it into a movie. There's some studios that are reading it. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah. Let's see. How about the glasses over the corner there? Yep. Really quiet, so I can hear. Did you forget your question? <laughs> All right, how about right next to you in the green right there? Um, are there books we don't, in the library? Not yet, but I plan to. <laughs> I'll bet there will be soon. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Go out and change the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.